Hello, this is Matthew Bell with Alzheimer'sProof.com. National statistics suggest that Alzheimer's is the sixth non-homicidal cause of death in the United States. But how exactly does a person die from Alzheimer's disease? We know that Alzheimer's is a progressive disease, which means that people who have it are going to get worse and worse over time. In its early stages, Alzheimer's is characterized by the loss of high-level functions, things like reasoning and memory. This is going to tend to increase a person's confusion, disorientation, it's going to make their judgment worse, it's going to affect their perception, and so on. As Alzheimer's progresses, a person may begin to lose even low-level functions, such as the ability to swallow food and water, or even to cough. The loss of these abilities can lead to complications and to death directly. For example, losing the ability to walk around can leave a person bedridden or wheelchair-bound. This can leave them open to things like blood clots, which can be fatal. Or again, losing the ability to cough can mean that a person suffering from a respiratory infection will be unable to clear his or her lungs. This can lead to pneumonia, which can lead to whole body infection, and again, to death, especially in an elderly person who may have compromised immunity for other reasons. Most commonly, a person with Alzheimer's disease will end up dying from one of these secondary conditions that arise as a complication to the Alzheimer's. But there are actually three possibilities for how a person with Alzheimer's disease could die. Let's kind of walk through them. Number one, they could die from some totally unrelated cause. This seems obvious and intuitive, but I think it's worth pointing out. The fact that someone has Alzheimer's disease does not necessarily mean that they will die from the Alzheimer's disease. We want to make a distinction between dying with Alzheimer's disease and dying from Alzheimer's disease. Because Alzheimer's is an incurable disease, once a person has it, they will die with Alzheimer's disease. But just because they will die with it doesn't necessarily mean that it will be the immediate cause of death. An extreme example of this might be a person who is diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and then dies in a plane crash the next week. The airplane crashing had nothing to do with the Alzheimer's disease. As I said, this is an extreme case, but there are other, less extreme examples. For instance, Alzheimer's often affects seniors, and there are many age-related illnesses and conditions that might accompany somebody being in advanced age person might have cardiovascular or heart problems, a person could have cancer, a person could have kidney failure of some kind. And an Alzheimer's sufferer could have any number of these conditions or a combination of them in addition to the Alzheimer's. The person might die from one of those secondary conditions rather than from the Alzheimer's disease. There's a caveat. It is arguable that a person's having Alzheimer's disease might make it more likely that they'll die from one of these secondary conditions even though they are, strictly speaking, unrelated. For example, a person suffering from a heart condition with Alzheimer's disease may not recognize the signs of an impending heart attack or might fail to act upon those signs in the appropriate way and thus maybe seal their fate, so to speak. But the fact remains that a heart condition per se is independent of Alzheimer's disease. Number two, a person could die from a secondary condition that arises as a complication from the Alzheimer's disease. Whereas with the unrelated condition examples, the Alzheimer's was either not a factor or if it was a factor, it was just incidental. In this case, as a secondary condition, the Alzheimer's is an indirect cause, if you want to say that, of the person's death. We've already looked at two examples of this. For example, a person with Alzheimer's might lose the ability to walk. Being wheelchair-bound or bedridden, the person with Alzheimer's would be at greater risk of developing blood clots, bed sores, and the like. And these bed sores could develop infections, or the blood clots could break loose and cause a stroke. The Alzheimer's is at least indirectly responsible in cases like this, arguably, because without the Alzheimer's, the person wouldn't have been immobile, Without the immobility, the person wouldn't have developed a blood clot, and so on. Pneumonia would be another secondary condition. A related set of causes might be accidents. It is intuitive that a person with Alzheimer's disease is going to suffer from diminished cognitive capacity. 
if a person with Alzheimer's, for example, gets into a fatal car crash, assuming that the Alzheimer's afflicted person is the driver, uh, it is possible that the Alzheimer's disease played a role in the car crash, maybe reducing the person's reaction time or their judgment or something along the lines of that. But whereas the immediate cause of death in a car crash would be blunt force trauma or something along the lines of this, clearly the Alzheimer's played a role, even if it was only indirect. For more information about driving and driving safety, please see my website, alzheimersproof.com. For information about driving laws, I also have articles and a video on that. Check out other videos on my YouTube channel. Number three, a person could die from Alzheimer's disease more or less directly. Alzheimer's eventually erodes or deteriorates the brain. As mentioned earlier, this means that the brain gets to the point where even low-level functions, like swallowing food and water or coughing, become difficult or impossible. When the person loses the ability to swallow food and water, then the person more or less starves to death. If the person loses the ability to cough, then he or she cannot clear the lungs and things like pneumonia become much more likely and the person can die from that. And to say that Alzheimer's plays a more direct role in these kinds of deaths seems appropriate. A related question is then, is Alzheimer's a terminal illness? There are actually two definitions of terminal illness. We will consider one to be a broad definition or a loose definition and the other to be a narrow definition or more strict definition. What I mean by broad or loose definition, I simply mean the definition that's assumed by people in everyday speech. On the everyday use of the term, Alzheimer's seems to be a terminal illness in the sense that it's incurable and you're going to die with it. Basically, in the everyday speech, saying something is a terminal illness is something just maybe a little bit higher than simply saying it's really, really bad. But in the narrow or strict conception of a terminal illness, there are sometimes very technical definitions that go along with this. So for example, in medicine and in insurance, a person might be concerned with a terminal illness and it would be defined something like this, an illness that you're expected to die from within 12 to 24 months. In other words, your life expectancy isn't just cut short in some generic way, but it is literally going to limit your life to one or two years. Now, when a person gets a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, they might be anywhere along the progression of the disease. And we remember uh, Alzheimer's disease has a kind of an early stage, a middle stage, and then an advanced or final stage. You can see alzheimersproof.com for a brief overview of Alzheimer's disease. But if a person is diagnosed in early stage, they may have 8 years, 10 years, 15 years, depending, uh, to still live with Alzheimer's disease. Similarly, in middle stage, it's not clear that the death is going to be imminent. As they advance through middle stage and begin to lose some of the functions that we've, we've previously talked about, then the writing begins to um, appear on the wall. But by late stage Alzheimer's, it is plausible that a person's life expectancy may only be another one or two years. So, is Alzheimer's a terminal illness? It certainly is in the broad or loose sense. And late stage Alzheimer's arguably is as well, even in the stricter narrow sense, because a person with late stage Alzheimer's probably has a life expectancy of only one to two more years. For me, these issues are a little bit more than just academic. My dad, Jim, died of Alzheimer's in 2016. As it happened, my dad went through more or less a full progression of the disease. Before he was officially diagnosed, he had a triple bypass surgery to correct arterial blockages, and he also had a colectomy to remove a cancerous portion of his lower intestine. Either of those two conditions, the heart condition or the colon cancer, could have killed him, and in fact, he was very close to death with the heart condition. It is tempting, in retrospect, to wish maybe that my dad had not undergone those corrective surgeries because, as it happened, it made him run through the full uh, degeneration of Alzheimer's disease. But it did allow me to observe sort of almost all three of the potential um, causes. So my dad had secondary conditions. Um, they were corrected, for the most part, but he could have died from those. 
He had the ability to drive a car early on, and he was involved in minor accidents, but he could easily have died in one of those or killed somebody else. Again, please consult the, the video on driving with Alzheimer's disease and the laws uh, with regard to that, as well as the written work on my website concerning not just the laws, but the safety uh, around that as well. well. Once my dad was in the nursing home environment, he had uh, numerous bouts with pneumonia, he had blood clots, and he had a number of other complications arise, any number of which could have killed him. He had respiratory infections, he had gastrointestinal bugs, and without the ability to cough correctly or to control uh, bodily functions, any of these could easily have, have, uh, have killed him. But in fact, he, he survived uh, through numerous episodes and was on hospice a number of times. He went in and out of hospice. Ultimately, uh, my dad lost his ability to swallow food and water, and ultimately even breathing seemed to be a struggle. And he finally passed more or less in what they refer to as a failure to thrive, which is sort of just an unspecifiable um, death that results from this severe deterioration of the brain. So I can appreciate what you and your family are going through or what you and your family are going to go through, but I would also just say um, none of us knows how we're going to die. Death is one of life's great certainties, but at the same time none of us knows the precise manner in which we will die. Uh, and the same goes for a person who has Alzheimer's disease. There's no um, purpose in worrying overly much about it. Um, it's going to happen to each of us. The best that we can do is to spend time with our loved ones and try and appreciate the time that we still have left. I know that this topic has been a difficult one. I hope that something that I said was of use to you. Know that I appreciate and empathize with the circumstance that you or your loved one are going through. I think it's an important topic to discuss. I invite you to check back to this YouTube channel for additional resources as they become available. And thank you so much for your time.